Generic greetings and welcome back to Stellaris where in the previous episode we had a little metaphorical walk to the garage, picked up an axe and then shouted here's Johnny at the robots on the left hand side here and as you can see the eerie bot keepers are not having a good time. They originally had a couple more uh, systems here which has now been taken over by these fellows, the um, Sir Gog Alliance and we have made quite a decent push uh, and good inroads from the northeast and we've taken three planets which as you can see is having their uh, population disassembled as we speak and we've taken about the same again in um, different systems and we continue to go forward and that's what we'll be doing at this episode we also have a bigger problem and that's because of all the stuff we've taken our empire sprawl is massive so um let's just see how we get on so i'll put that up to max speed as we uh, progress on towards this area here now there's lots of different uh, places to take i'm going to probably work up to the north reason for that is we can go there take the home world actually do you want to do that first or do you want to go around no oh, yeah i think there first and then take the home world and then probably work that way and back over is Our the way forward and so once they lose all of that it means that basically um that's their game over with to be honest with you um looks like we are managing to take the bit down the bottom here and i will then use the um science ship to go down and start researching this gas giant structure so unpausing there and letting these crack on we do have a, a bit of a fight here 411 plus a 585 space station against our 2.8k which seems to have got bigger and uh, wasn't it 2.6 last time? Ah, it might be because we do automatically regen our uh, <laughs> our health, which is interesting. Uh, so that's uh, working on there. We do have a science ship here, which is currently uh, researching this debris here, which you can see there's got lots of deflectors in there and other such things, which is good. We've got the same again up here, and I think what we'll do is get our our armies to land there but only once we've uh, cleared this off. It looks like we are shooting that star base but it is taking quite some time. Um, eventually we'll also be attacking this transport ship here which is looks like to be... oh yeah is that loads of armies? Um, yes it's loads of armies so hopefully we'll be able to uh, at least destroy a lot of their armies so they won't be able to take stuff back. And there's some assimilated knowledge there which is good. We will land armies on this planet which currently only has one anyway so that's fine and then we'll use that to uh, research projects in that system. So that is our um, next planet taken over. The one after that is their home world, which I think I will go and attack right now because why not? The inversion of this world shouldn't Technology take consumed. too long. Um, in fact, there you go. That didn't take too long at all. We will actually not jump into the next bit yet. We'll wait until we've um, at least come in and... Uh, engage these. You can see that we are slightly faster than their, <laughs> their their transport fleet so we can get in there and destroy them and now we're taking on a little bit of fleet and then finally that bit there as well. We'll take our we'll take our transport ships and bring them into Erie which is their home system. We do have some physics research to select. Cold fusion reactors is par research probably because of uh, the bit that we found in and around there. I think we will probably go for that because that is a fairly big boost um, just having more power on your ships is just well more power more better I guess that uh, means you can clamp more stuff on and not have to worry about adding extra uh, capacitors or other things like that so that is now done and we will probably move straight on there's no reason to stop and bombard because I don't think they have any army oh, they have two armies so again it's like not even worth bothering with like sieging that we'll just land the army straight away uh, this is an arid roll so there's no way we can uh, stick around that that guy is now finished um, building here. The question is, do I want to move forward? I would like to move over to that area, but it's, again, we're taking a lot of stuff now, and we're now nearly double the Empire, uh, things like leader upkeep and campaign costs and stuff like that. Not a huge, huge problem at this point, but we should probably go ahead and... Uh, curve that a little bit. We have taken Erie, so that's their home system gone. You can see the home system has moved over to uh, Bay Dan over on the right there, but we're going to bring the <laughs> bring this ship down, uh, this fleet down rather, take this area, which does have a fleet, but it's just, oh, it's a scattered fleet. It's pretty much, um, it's pretty much gone. There's nothing much to really uh, see there. Um, what are we doing for these worlds? That one there is... Not building anything. 42 pensibility. We need to get probably more amenities. Again, it's this. It's this. 20% um, 
Uh, it's not actually 20% more mean we use. I believe it's 20% less than we make. So, that's an issue. Oh, we're even capturing a, a colony ship by the look of it here. That's just inappropriate. Um, so, come down to there. You can see all of these in the front of your sectors. All of these here. Mining world, mining world, fringe world. There's only the first one that we can really take anyway because population is currently Hisma. Um, population decreasing. Um, the question is, do we keep the world? I guess we can't do anything at the moment until we've taken it because we need to actually take the world, but we'll find out shortly whether or not that will happen. Uh, we have destroyed that and we'll go over there and take on this little bit of fleet and it look at that it's tiny it's it's pretty much gone and then we'll go into the center once again we'll land the armies we do have a science ship that's uh, currently researching all the debris over there we've got crystal mines which is good we've got um ooh, lots of stuff actually here we've got a lot of stuff that we can select because this is some of the stuff that we found in the debris field and such however we don't want exotic gas refineries we don't really want synthetic crystal plants some of this stuff is all this is good probably not coil guns the armor is good but I think of all things cruisers I know we haven't got almost any of it research but well we haven't got any of it research but I think it's uh, worth it once again no arm oh, I was gonna say once again I was gonna say uh, not much there but there's no armies there uh, we actually have low stability on one of our planets and unsurprisingly it's one of the ones that we've just taken um, yes I'm not um, ah, in fact, if, as you can see, it's, uh, has it removed itself as a planet? I think it has. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Low stability, one planet has low stability. Yeah, it's actually been, the colony's gone, because we've got rid of all the population. Um, that is a, that's actually a space station, with two shipyards, quite honestly. I think it's probably fine if we keep that. That construction of uh, ships there is done. We'll send it back around to build that, although it's quite some ways, isn't it? Um, what we'll probably do then, honestly, is build... Not there, not there, there. And we'll just build a construction ship. Our construction is complete. And we might as well continue on and see if we can take all of that. Our construction is complete. So head over to the centre here, and no, apparently they want to engage right in the centre. Oh, looks like they're heading towards the uh, the starbase first. Not that it's going to take much anywhere. That's look at that. That's a slaughterhouse. That is shocking, really. They've got one, two, one, two, two science ships, two transport fleets, probably full of armies, three transport fleets, and a colony ship. It's the last world that they have. So it's their last refuge, and we're just basically turning up and going, eh, no. Um, I'm afraid that uh, your survival is on a ticking clock now. And they're now gone. I want to upgrade. And we'll land armies. They only have one army there. And that should be them. That'll be them wiped out, I think. That sign ship's not got much to do. We can say explorate now. That's good. Explore over there. And basically, this will be the end of that fight, I think. They do technically have one world over there. Sorry, one system over there, but it's not a world. And you do need worlds in order to uh, survive. Hive oh, Hive is under attack. Oh, they've built one ship. <sighs> Do we, you eat? <laughs> Turn around. Ah, looks like we landed first anyway. And then there's them taken out. And that's it. Technology that is it. Um, it hasn't popped up to say that they're dead, but you can see we're no longer at war. They don't have this system here. And... Ooh... <laughs> The admin. Oh, the admin. So we now have terraforming gases and terraforming. Um, increased food from farmers. Monthly influence. Starbase capacity. Um, all these are really good. Food from farmers is probably the way forward. 
So we've now managed to wipe out these guys. They are completely gone. We are researching this gas giant structure. A large derelict space station is trapped in a slow terminal orbit inside the atmosphere of this gas giant. Obviously, definitely not uh, the Bespin mining <laughs> sister. Uh, the Bespin mining thing from episode 5. The gravitational stresses will likely strike complete within the next thousand years. Okay. Um, it has not yet drifted deep enough into the atmosphere to make archaeological expeditions to the station impossible. So we have got someone going over there to research it. We have now got a board with them here and we are... Yes! Uh, look at that. That's crazy. So plus 35% technology cost because we are massively over our Empire Sprawl. Sorry, Empire Sprawl is massively over the capacity. Tradition adoption cost is plus 60%. Our campaign cost, leadership upkeep and leadership cost is plus 120%. Oh dear. So, um, we can see that these areas here uh population controls is no no population growth on the planet um so the question is how do we want to do this this is a fringe planet it's not actually growing anything active population controls are preventing pop growth there are no species that can grow on this planet it is an arctic world we the hisma is there Arctic preference with a hive core. What am I missing? Right. Well, I can understand that one not being there because they're 20%. They'll probably die out. And they're on. All these population controls are there to say, no, don't be. No, don't stick around. Um, even their home world, look at that, that's great. Declining is... Huh, that's actually somebody else, strangely. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen with those. I can understand most of these declining because we're disassembling these things here. Um, but what's interesting is that things like that world there is technically still there as a world... Continue drone production. Right. Well, we don't want that anymore. Is there anything we can do about it is the question. Because it's technically there. We technically own it. And we have... Well, we have owned it and it's in a frontier sector. But there's no population. And normally when that happens, that just gets removed from this list. So I'm leaning towards bug. Um, this one here, we can continue drone, uh, drone production. That's an, um, We might as well do that because um, this is a... This is an Arctic world. Uh, that is Gaia world, so we might as well continue drone production on that one and uh, put ourselves on that Our one. Uh, prioritize. Yes, that is prioritized. That's fine. So these worlds, the Gaia world, which is brilliant. That's really, really good. Uh, where is the Gaia world? There. We have assimilated right in the center. Yeah, so that's great. But some of these others will just eventually uh, have them destroyed. And it's strange that it's not being removed from the list. Don't know why that is. Anyway, uh, continue on expanding down the south there, along that arm. So all of these here we're not really going to do much with. Um, this one, however, is there. We can, I think, it would be probably beneficial to uh, create a new sector. There we go, that adds all them to the sector. And it has put, thankfully, the um, that Our world there, it has put that world into that as well. That's our Gaia world. Not Eerie, which is their main home system. And Scum and Villainy on Ear. Distant, uh, deviant activity continues to grow on Ear. An open defiance of the will of the hive mind. Okay, they have strayed for the hive mind on Ear. Well, that's to be expected, to be fair, because... Yeah, drone deviancy, and they're declining, and nothing's growing. And deviant drones are like criminals. We're not going to continue growing the population, so I don't know what we'll do with that one. It's just strange some of these aren't um, dying off. Um, I haven't put these on automated 
growth, but I will put the Arctic world and the Guy world on automatic. Um, I think that's probably the way forward. So we've assimilated some technology, which is good. So we can go back to uh, that science ship there. And there's still a lot more to find. Down here, we are um, going to excavate this site. Which should be doing shortly. Uh, this... Uh, ships almost finished uh, building that. I'm going to then tell it to move forward. We have maxed out, strangely, our minerals. We will sell uh, a lot of that because we might as well. Move that back to the home world. I'll actually close that. Uh, actually, no. It's probably best to look at it for the time being. So we've got a wormhole there. we got a wormhole there. We've got a wormhole there. We've got a Technology gate consumed. there. And we've got a... Um, another gateway there. Is that an L-gate? It is. No, it's a disabled gateway. So, yeah, they are there. Cold Fusion Reactor is now up and running. We have loads more research. Uh, research alternative is always a good one. However, with us being on minus 40 energy credits, it's going to be straight for the quantum energy state, which increases our uh, energy production. And we're going to upgrade our fleet, because we do have more than enough to do that. Uh, that's working over there. That's not doing anything there, but there's nothing to do. And I guess it's just over here now to start building that station and, quite frankly, upgrading that station because it is right next door to um, these guys who... Uh, fleet power is equivalent currently, and we've got 3k fleet power, but their economic and technology uh, level is pathetic to us. Um, I am concerned with this, with this stuff here. Uh, I actually am going to assign a governor to them as well, so I'll recruit that. Um, crime reduction, food production, I think food production, yeah. There we go. It's worrying that these fringe systems here, we can see population. Currently nothing's declining, and the only one person is that person there. But we're not growing them. And you can see it's an ocean world, we've got loads of uh, minuses there. I'm going to resettle them. Can I send them to the Gaia world? Yes, I can. Our construction is complete. So there should yes, be nobody there now. Knowledge. Let me just uh, pause it a second. We now have an additional tradition perk here. Ship build cost reduction, ship fire rate increase, ship upkeep reduction and naval capacity increase. Yes, <laughs> anything to do with uh, reducing that is pretty good. So, this world here does have a governor. No pop, uh, nothing going on there. Can we say continue with it doing anything? No, it won't do anything. So, it's like so basically saying technically we own this. Conceived. But we have 10 colonies. But this isn't a colony anymore. There's nobody there. That's annoying. I don't know what I can do about that. So, you can say cease drone production, but there was no one there anyway because I've moved them over. Same as for these ones, I'm going to resettle them to uh, Gizmic, I think. It only takes 100. So that now mining world, there's nothing there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Oh no, that's already done. And this one here, resettle to uh, the guy world. Done. So we've got now one, two, three, four worlds that are completely empty. They do technically have a governor, um, but they've got no people there, and we've got drone production stopped on all of them. But because they're there, they're still increasing my uh, empire sprawl. So it's colonies from 10 colonies, a total of 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4 on the front of your sector 5. Um... Not much we can do about that. Deploy hunter killer drones, that one. I'll resettle. Um, or complex drone to the Gaia world. And I'll let that do whatever it wants to do. There we go. And there we are. So we're not growing any population there. So yeah, um, a total of 10 Empire Sprawl is because of these worlds that we have taken but won't be using. Hmm. 
Synapse clusters. Increase energy credit or turns energy credits into food and unity, but we haven't built more many of those. We're gonna go for civic slots. Yeah, I don't know whether that's just a quirk of the um the Hismahod stuff that we've got going, because we are uh, wanting to wipe everybody out. I don't know whether that's the Devouring Swarm thing, whether it's a Devouring Swarm versus a, essentially the similar sort of thing with the robots, or whether it's just a bug. Um, there's not any way to, well, normally the only way to not have a world, as far as I can tell, if you've colonised it, so like basically decolonise a world, is to do what we've done on a lot of these, which is uh, put like turn all production off, um, remove everybody off it that you can, and do that way. And then once it's once it's gone, it then gets removed from this list and it doesn't count as colonized. But for whatever reason, it's still saying that yes, we have uh, this is our world. And I don't know if there's any way to remove it. I can can move the capital, and I don't think there's a way to remove it, which is a shame. Anyway, so that's now automated. That not doing in there. There's more uh, deviation there, which we're aware of. Um, oh, okay. This is different. So, Hisma weaklings are warriors on the way to plunder our systems. So, we can actually talk to them. We can actually give them something. I'm going to give them minerals so they don't attack me. So, it's probably this guy sending these toward me. I'd rather not have to deal with all of that. Okay. So, the gas giant structure. Um, so, the present dark and lifeless interior of the space station almost uh, succeeds in hiding the fact that it must have been designed some kind of luxurious pleasure palace. There are seemingly endless rows of rusty slot machines, hundreds of decrepit bars and restaurants, and amidst all, thousands of bodies, dead, partially mummified aliens of at least a dozen different species can be found everywhere. But most of the bodies are clustered around an empty, uh, empty escape pods. Also, something's happened there. Certainly. Um, right, so I guess we'll have, we have no choice but to crack on. I guess I'll send, um, those over to there and those over to there. Uh, this is going to be downgraded. Don't complete. really want that. What's this one? That is Anchorage, which increases naval Please capacity. I'm going to downgrade that as well. This one is not upgraded, but this one is upgraded with what we want, which is shipyards. And we'll upgrade it even further to have uh, probably some guns on it as well. Right, that's fine. So... They've surveyed the... Uh, those are getting upgraded there. We and we're assimilating knowledge. That's got not much to do. That can work back over. And finally from here, we can go with a missile battery, gun battery, and probably a tag uplink computer. And then finally, one, two, three, four, five, six defences. <laughs> because we basically want this to be a wedge, just... Nope, we don't have to deal with this anymore. You know, you can't attack that way. If you've got a massive space station, Our then it works out. And oh! What's this? Learned of a new strategic resource encountered on... here. And it is Zro. And we've bumped into another faction, but it hasn't popped up. The Federation Builders, the Lavis Mandate. And they're actually rivaling two other empires, so we have bumped into them at least. Okay, good. Um, I don't think there's much we can do with these. No, there's not. I guess we'll just have to put them on the front here. They're docked up there. They can't do anything there. Right. That changes things just a little. Hmm. No building there, no building there. Nothing to build there. It's just down here, really. What am I do? get this guy to go over and start sorting this out and we do want to probably take these out as well um, we'll reinforce the fleet I was gonna say why don't I increase the size of it but at the moment we can't because we're at max fleet capacity which is five uh, 50 sorry um, not naval capacity though just just fleet capacity and also we're getting cruisers at some point so yeah so we've got some more stuff here uh, the star Petal. 
Derelict Station, once known as the Star Petal, is apparently a celebrated luxury resort in this corner of the galaxy. Nearly a thousand years ago, a small fleet of tugs would drag the station to a new <laughs> exotic location each year, but uh, Sulpy 1 appears to have been its last. Un uh, unclear reason. The station was pulled into the gas giant's atmosphere where it suffered critical damage. Okay, this is interesting. It's going to go on there. Um, so we're upgrading our world. This is still, this is still niggling. It's still eating away somewhat at me. Um, let's go for more harvesting traps on this guy world. And also, we'll probably... No, we can't do anything like that. Yeah, why these are not removed, I don't know. There has been uh, one patch since the save game, uh, since we started the save game, and it has uh, altered some things, so it might be to do with that. And I did point that out right at the start of the series, that that might be the case. Or maybe it's just something I'm missing, probably. Uh, right, so our home world, finally we're going to go for our maintenance depot, so it increases base production of, uh, <laughs> of amenities. By nine, we've got some energy credits, so we're still on minus 21, but it's not... A massive problem now. Chemical plants, shields, plasma throwers. We're going to go for plasma throwers and work up that way for the technology. That sign ship is sitting is there and we will now get this fleet to go and wipe out some of these which are, are there only size 700 and complete. other things. So we can take probably take one, two, three but I mean it depends what these systems have left and right. Um... But yeah, that is a good little bit of an assault there. With it being two hundred, almost two hundred Empire sprawl, and only seventy percent, uh, seventy administrative capacity, I'm not keen on expanding much further. There is the option to vassalize this. Um, could actually, do, can we vassalize? I think we can. No, we can't. We cannot create vassals. We do not want any planet that we can give up. Because we're a hive mind. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the final days. The archaeologists uh, working on the star petal have gathered sufficient clues and evidence to paint a reasonably clear picture of the station's final days. A stray asteroid impacted the station, knocking it into an orbit that would soon plunge it into uh, Cypok 1's one, atmosphere. Station keeping thrusters could not compensate and the command staff soon issued the evacuation order. Unfortunately, the station had only enough escape pods to evacuate a fraction of its passengers and mass panic soon erupted. Those who were not trampled to death perished when the station's environmental systems failed as it drifted deeper into the gas giant. So it's Titanic then. Um, also, if the tugs move it around, why weren't they there to help it out? Anyway, uh, it looks like we are uh, absolutely annihilating these guys over here. And we've got some research as well. So that's now cleared. We're going to send that over there. We will get that to research projects in that system. This one we'll... Might as well bring down. And looks like we've got some expiry there for growth pop speed, which we will then put back on because we have more than enough food for that. Same as learning campaign and war doctrine. We might as well keep that on, even though we're uh, not currently at war. Um, so that's fine. That's working there. That shipyard uh, does have some upgrades that we can put on probably probably target uplink computer as well as gun batteries and missile batteries um there we are and we are maxed out once again on that which is good got another fight here it shouldn't be looks like the federation builders have contacted us or was that the vassal of Demand vassalization. The lavish mandate vassalizes them. Ah. Huh. Where are they at? Them there. Okay. Interesting. At least we've just met them anywhere. We now know where the next snack is. Uh, to be fair, now the next snack would be here. Um, on about worries. They're actually rivaling me. We can't rival because. Uh, we do not have the option to, sadly. Even though it would be nice to give Our us some extra influence. We don't need to declare any war goals, it's just not how it works. We always have a cast a spell eye against anybody, and it's just take you out. Strange to think that back in the day the game didn't have that. You could just go to war for any reason. 
We have assimilated, assimilated knowledge. knowledge. Some people might be quite nostalgic for that. Uh, research projects in that system, we can do that. Uh, that one, we can survey the system. And this fleet, we will bring down to wipe out those aliens there. Obviously, we can't get through here. Uh, if we look at the size of it, we've got one, two, three. 3k plus space stations plus a 9.9k fleet plus a titan of 7.4k plus any odds and ends that we've gotten around here that's just one of them uh, another one over here is even worse and then up there is uh, about the same so there's no way we'll be able to take those out um, they normally hit the great can stuff about mid game so we got quite a ways until that happens really um, but honestly, I don't know if we'll get there, um, because I'm thinking of just leaving it there. We've established communications with some someone. First contact with the Constellation Pavilion commonalities, which are oh, up there. Hello. Um, they're hegemonic imperialists. This guy looks very aggressive, isn't it? It's very aggressive. We've um, got, obviously, ourselves, which are devouring swarm. We have the Honorbound Warriors, which are... Well, there's a file, to be fair, so they're an equal opportunities killer. Um, we've got the Federation Builders. They're not aggressive in any particular sense, although they have basically vassalized these guys, which are Federation Builders. We've got Honorbound uh, Hegemonic Imperialists here, which is Fanatic Militarist and Authoritarian. And then finally up here, we have uh, Ruthless Capitalists, which is Militarist, Spiritualist, and Xenophile. Um, and then also, they are currently at war with the hierarchy of... Overseer, which we don't have and we shouldn't be able to see, but glitches. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave it there for this episode, and depending on whether there's a massive call to continue, might even leave it there entirely. Um, simply because we've taken out a lot, and that was quite interesting. We've done a lot of the exploration. In fact, you know what? No, I'm not going to stop it there. I want to wait until we finish this gas giant stuff. <laughs> At least if we get the gas giant stuff, we've got a nice little ending for this, and we know what's happening there. Um, but unless there's a massive call to continue from here, then we'll probably leave it. Simply Our because to take complete. over this would just be... It, it's going to take forever, which we knew it was going to be. Um, I think we can take them out. I think our fleet power is sufficient and we're getting some... Uh, our fleet power is currently sufficient and we're about to get cruisers. Although we might even have cruisers at this point. Ship designer, which by the mind, we've never touched a ship designer. It's just automatic and it works, so we don't bother with it. Um, it's concerning with this stuff. That's what's really making me go, hmm, do we really want to continue there? Is it a bit buggy? I know the last patch notes did fix some things that were iffy. Uh, and certainly we've had s the odd trouble with the automation here, but not massively. Not like, you know, a huge issue. But um, a bit of a one at times. Uh, why is that? Oh, it's only a little bit of stability loss. Um, that's got less amenities here. Yeah, we need more amenities. Maintenance depots. I should sort that right out. And there we go. The heart of the pulsar. Rummaging through the secure safes where the star petals' wealthiest clientele stored their professional belongings has revealed a treasure trove of strange artifacts and jewellery. Perhaps the most noteworthy thing among the items was the heart of the pulsar, a unique diamond necklace quite... Famous in its day for having been worn by five different heads of state. Curious, which gives us eight minor artifacts and 4,000 energy credits. And that is that complete. Sadly, no relics. Got some minor stuff. Hmm. But, yeah. Not too bad at all. So, we finished that. We've done how many? One, two, three archaeological dig sites. Is it just the three? There was the City of Bones. There was the Creeping Doom. That's the uh, Massive Impact Crater. That's the huge drilling machine. We've got this uh, Titanic type thing there, which was quite good. And I thought there was one more thought there was one more. Oh no, it's the bauble which was up there, but we didn't do it. We just found it. Uh, the beautiful bauble there. Uh, there might be one more if I'm missing it. I do apologise. But yeah, interesting. Quite enjoyed that. Um, as I said, we'll leave it there, I think, for um, this episode and indeed this series, unless there's a huge call to continue on. A first time uh, on the channel playing this Devouring Swarm, and you know what? It's a lot more interesting than I thought. Um, 
obviously the intricacies of diplomacy are not there, but also you can just attack. So if you want to do the very aggressive species, then, well, naturally, <laughs> it might sound obvious that uh, this is pretty good. Different that we also found the, the robot version of ourselves right next door. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I didn't expect that. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some more patches into the game. We'll see some slight improvements. It's just tweaks and changes. Nothing, as far as I can tell, majorly broken. Tweaks and changes when it comes to uh, the automation of the... Uh, of the worlds, um, the balance when it comes to building housing and amenities and balancing the stability and all that sort of stuff. Just, like I said, tweaks and changes and whatnot. Don't know whether it's to do with just 2.3 uh, in general or whether it's to do with us being uh, just our consciousness and the... Uh, and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know why this is still in our um, area. Would like to see the ability to just remove it from there. And if there is that, okay, if there is the uh, ability to do that, then by all means, let me know. Um, and yeah, see what happens with plants and sectors as they go forward. Either way, hope you have enjoyed everything we've done so far. We've had a nice little run. Quite enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings. <laughs>